promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. The murders of John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, and Martin Luther King marked a turning point in the history of the United States and the world that have had serious repercussions for our planet and every person on it right down to the present day. Readers of theologian James Douglas' book, JFK and the Unspeakable, why he died and why it matters, will know that JFK's negotiations with Russia probably saved the planet from nuclear war, something that his murderers didn't care about since the deaths of millions, even billions, meant nothing to them as long as the cash register kept ringing up their profits. The Kennedy brothers and Martin Luther King embodied the last obstacle to the complete takeover of American politics and life by a cabal of psychopathic warmongers. John Kennedy knew what kind of forces were arrayed against him. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, Martin Luther King also knew, but he was compelled by his sense of what was right to stand for the truth, regardless of the threat to himself. This business of burning human beings with napalm, of filling our nation's homes and with orphans and widows, of injecting poisonous drugs of hate into the veins of peoples normally humane, of sending men home from dark and bloody battlefields physically handicapped and psychologically deranged, cannot be reconciled with wisdom, justice, and love. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. With John, Martin, and Bobby dead, the way was opened for this ruthless cabal to pursue their plans for not only complete control of American politics and life, but control over much of the rest of the world. The FBI and CIA were given free reign to pursue their campaigns of suppressing all dissent at home and infiltrating and overthrowing democracies abroad. The same cabal, including some of the same individuals involved in the assassination of the Kennedys, created the phony war on terror launched by way of the staged 9-11 attacks. We now live in a world openly ruled by psychopaths who have taken over almost every government on the planet, guided and directed by the cabal, controlled by their banks and corporations. What Dwight Eisenhower feared at the end of World War II has come to pass. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. If, having watched this DVD set, you have been shocked by the profound evil that motivated the murderers of true heroes like John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, and Martin Luther King. If you have been appalled and sickened by the extent of the lies that have been used to hide the truth. If 
you have been galvanized to want to do something about it, then, for the sake of your own future and that of your children and your children's children, take a stand for the truth. It is from numberless diverse acts of courage such as these, the belief that human history is thus shaped. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. The men who create power make an indispensable contribution to the nation's greatness. But the men who question power make a contribution just as indispensable, especially when that questioning is disinterested. For they determine whether we use power or power uses us. God has told me that he wants freedom for his people. And I'm not going to run from the responsibility. It may even mean physical death, but if it means that I will die standing up for the freedom of my people.